What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's lesson I'm going to be showing you how you can create realistic looking water reflections from scratch in Photoshop. Alright guys, right now I'm going to be showing you how you can create a cool water reflection from scratch in Photoshop. Um, you'll see here that I have a, a cool kind of old castle image uh, that I'm ready to start with. And the first thing that I'm going to do is press Command J on the keyboard to create a duplicate of my original layer, which you'll see over here in the layers palette. So uh, from here we need to add some space to the bottom of the canvas so that we have room to uh, flip our image for our reflection. So to do that, we're going to come up to the image menu and choose canvas size. Now you'll see our image is about 1691 pixels high. Um, so we basically want to add about that much space below the canvas. So you'll notice here you have a, um, the anchor option, which if I don't click anything and I increase the height to about 3300 pixels, it's basically going to add that space onto the top as well as the bottom. But we only want it on the bottom. So to do that, we're going to click the up arrow, and you'll see that these three squares in the bottom are now blank. So when I hit OK, it's only adding space below the image. So the next thing we're going to do is come up here to our ruler. If you don't have those uh, visible currently, you can get them just by pressing Command R on the keyboard. And we're just going to drag this down somewhere about here. We don't want to, um, you know, we don't want it to be a reflection from all the way on the bottom, but maybe come up into the image a little bit, and then make another copy by pressing Command J one more time, Command T to do a free transform, and then hold down the Control key and click on your image and select flip vertical from the bottom. All right, now that you've done that, hold down the shift key and drag this image down so that it lines up with the guide. And we're actually gonna put this um, below our original image here. So you can either move that manually or just press command in the left bracket to move it below. Now, as I was saying before, we don't want some of this extra grass or anything like that showing. So I'm just gonna switch to my marquee tool, excuse me, uh, which is M on the keyboard, and then bring it down to about this guide so that you have a rectangle there, and then just click on the layer mask icon, add layer mask icon over here in the layers palette. All right, and now we're going to do the same thing um, with our other image. We're just going to basically tap it up a little bit to about there. Okay, now from here what we're going to do is actually come up to the filter menu and choose Blur, Motion Blur, and make sure that you have your, you know, your reflection layer selected for this. Okay, so we want to do uh, an angle of about 90, so that it's just, you know, vertical up and down, and a distance of around 50 pixels. Then go ahead and hit OK. All right, so now that we've applied that, um, the next thing that we're going to do is actually distort this a little bit. So if you come up to the Filter menu and choose Distort, and then from there, I think we're going to try uh, Wave and just kind of see what this looks like. You want it to be a little bit wavy, but not too crazy. So let's see what that looks like. That's a little bit much. I think we'll hold off on the Wave now until we, we come back to this a little bit later. So uh, for now, just go ahead and create a new layer by pressing Command, Option, Shift, N on the keyboard or you can simply come down here and click the new layer icon in your layers palette. From there, we're going to make sure that we have a white uh, foreground color and then press option alt delete on the keyboard to fill it with white. Next, uh, come up to the filter menu and choose noise, add noise from the menu. And we wanna have something like, uh, I think a Gaussian, yeah, Gaussian monochromatic, okay? Now, uh, once again, we'll come up to the filter menu and do another motion blur. This time, though, instead of going up and down, we want the motion blur to go side to side. So let's do a motion blur of about um, 90 pixels with an angle of zero and hit OK. Now, from here, we want to actually increase the contrast a little bit. So we'll do a levels adjustment by pressing Command L on the keyboard. And we're just going to drag this left hand slider in towards the center to uh, increase the the blacks here. All right, and then go ahead and hit OK. And now we're going to do a regular Gaussian blur just to blur these, these lines a little bit so it's not so harsh. 
All right, maybe a uh, radius of about four, and then go ahead and hit OK. And uh, let's see, we want to move this down below our original image so that it's only appearing on the reflection. All right, but you'll notice here on the edges that you've got these kind of like white highlights on the sides. We want to get rid of that, so we're just going to do a free transform and extend it a little bit past our canvas here. All right, from there, um, with your noise layer selected, make a copy of it by pressing Command J on the keyboard and then turn off the visibility of that first copy, of the second copy, sorry. So with the bottom copy selected, we're going to change the blending mode to soft light and reduce the opacity to about 40% or so. All right, then we're going to come up to our top copy and we're going to invert it by pressing Command I on the keyboard. And then we will do another levels adjustment by pressing Command L once again and increasing the contrast here by dragging in uh, the left hand slider towards the middle. All right, then hit OK to apply the changes. And we're going to change the blending mode of this layer to overlay and reduce the opacity of this to about 40% as well. And I'm just going to tap it down a few pixels to create kind of an overlap here um, to create these shadows. Okay, so now you'll see we kind of have this uh, extra white space on the bottom, which we don't really want. So I'm just going to switch to my marquee tool real quick and cut some of that off and drag it all the way to the top and then come up to image crop like so. And then what we're going to do is, um, let's see here. Yeah, we don't want that. So you'll see there's kind of like a hard line here in the middle where the, uh, the horizon is, but uh, we want to kind of uh, take care of that a little bit by maybe blurring it or, or perhaps masking it out a little. Yeah. So I'm just going to add a layer mask and then use a gradient that fades from black to transparent to click down and kind of remove that just to soften that line there. Now from here, these, these two layers are basically what are creating the, the ripples in the water. Um, but you'll notice now it's kind of everything is uniform. So what we want to do is add a little bit of perspective to it. So I'm going to put them both in a group folder by holding shift and clicking both layers and then pressing command G. And I'm just going to call this like ripples or something like that. And then do a free transform on the whole group folder. Now hold down the control key and click and choose perspective from the menu. Now from here you can grab either of the bottom left or bottom right handles and then drag it outwards while holding down the shift and alt option key. Right, and that's just going to create some perspective, so you'll kind of see the bounding box, what's happening. And I'm going to drag these handles in a little bit, and then hit return. And also we can do a regular transform just to, to squish it down a little bit more to make some of those ripples a little bit closer together, like that. And then hit enter on the keyboard to apply the changes. And so now you kind of see this rippled effect here in the water that we have. And you know, you can play around with the opacity of these layers to, you know, to get a result that you like. Maybe you want a little bit more contrast in them or a little bit less. Um, and just play around with that. So you have your overlay layer as well as the soft light layer happening at the same time. Okay. And one other thing that, you know, I want to try really quick is actually if you duplicate that folder and turn off the visibility of the original one, um, we can actually select both of these layers and maybe try uh, skewing it so that you know the ripples appear not perfectly in alignment but maybe more um, at an angle you know so that it looks like it's coming uh, towards the viewer a little bit across the across the pond instead of straight up and down all right so I'm just going to transform that a little bit more and apply that transformation like so and then I'm just going to mask that out a little bit like that. So now you'll see instead of going you know, directly across the horizon, you can actually have your ripples kind of going at an angle into the picture, which I think looks a little bit more realistic. So um, that's kind of a cool way that you can create this uh, rippled water effect from scratch in Photoshop. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If so, please uh, give us a like, give us a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel and be sure to sign up for our email list. Right now we've got a design contest going on called the Design Better Contest uh, where you guys can ask me any design related questions you have and let me know what projects you're working on that you need help with. And I'm going to pick three to five people each month 
and I will work on your projects in one of my videos to give you personalized tips and ways that you can improve your work right now. So thanks again for watching guys, check that out and we'll see you next time.